Good afternoon, Tara. Hi, Julian. How are you? I'm doing well. So I know you from, well, we're friends, but when I first found you, I was struggling with a lot of sinus issues and immune system issues and was looking for alternatives. So I went on Google, this was probably like what, four years ago now. And I was typing in allergies and alternative healings and I found you. And that's when you were living in Fredericton, New Brunswick. And I started coming to you for Nate treatments and then that developed into readings and channelings and if you could maybe just start to explain your journey from what you were doing before and even maybe as a nurse to how you were first called to alternative feelings and where you where it has led you to now. Yeah, sure. Um, so I was a nurse for 12 years and I specialized in pediatrics and psychiatric. Um, so that wasn't fulfilling me anymore. So I was, um, I had an injury and I ha and, uh, the medical system wasn't working to heal myself. So I started looking into alternative medicine and ended up, um, taking courses on energy healing. And I did Nate allergy treatment for a while. So I slowly transitioned from uh, nursing into the natural therapy. And then when I was doing the natural therapy, all the stuff um, that I had kind of shut down from childhood with receiving messages from spirit started to open up again. And of course, at first I ignored it. And, um, and then all my clients stopped. So my guide said, if you're not going to give our messages, you're not gonna get clients. So mm -hmm. I uh, said, okay, I'll give the messages. So I started to, you know, slowly give messages and I'm still doing, um, natural therapy or healing work um, within, you know, the, the community in New Brunswick, in Fredericton. And so I did that for a few years and then it slowly transitioned into um, trans channeling, which took, um, when I did started doing the channeling of spirit, I um, wanted to work with um, the Ascended Masters because they, they had been coming to me and saying that, you know, we had soul contract to, to work together. So, um, I had asked them to, to show me how they were going to be working with me. And, uh, that began, uh, my process of finding trans channeling. So, um, I had to clear out my chakras, um, with them for about eight, eight or nine years before I started doing trance channeling. And that's because when I do go into trance and I'm channeling Ascended Master St. Germain, other Ascended Masters are coming in with um, different frequencies coming through my chakras to um, offer to the audience or to the person I'm channeling for uh, to integrate healing frequencies. Um, and it's always up to them how they receive. So if they wish to receive it um, for, you know, physical pain, emotional pain, spiritual pain, mental pain, whatever it is, it's up to them on a conscious and spiritual level, what they're open to receiving. So I never know what they're going to receive, but I'm shown as I'm doing the channel reading, um, my guides will show me where that person is receiving. So uh, St. Germain is always the one that translates the message. And um, I also enjoy working with them because I'm, it's always uh, just divine, highest light. Um, I do connect with uh, people who have crossed over, but I'll get St. Germain to bring them in. And um, so really it's like, as soon as you book the appointment or come to a group session, your spirit guides start working with my spirit guides, but ultimately it's all one energy and it's all conscious love that we're channeling. So it's, it's uh, because we're, we're, um, human and we like to have identities and attachments and yeah. friends we we kind of choose to play with spirit guides so it's kind of like having friends on planet earth but they're in spirit form so um you know you you're, we're all just assigned uh, spirit guides in our lifetime whatever you choose to do in your life spirit guides will come and help you out with that um, whether you're aware aware or not so 
um, everyone can channel and I teach a channeling course on um, how to channel and um, St. Germain teaches that course with me so he'll know exactly where the person's vibrating at to what, what they're ready to receive at that time for um, how to connect with their own guides uh, like you know where, wherever they're vibrating at so if you're a beginner he'll teach you from where you're at as you start okay. out. but if you're an advanced channeler he'll teach you from there so it, it depends on where um, your your vibration is because we're all vibrational beings and you receive um, where or your awareness is from where you're vibrating at um, so I do the channel uh, teachings for how to channel and also um, consciousness class which is anything with ascension symptoms or awakening symptoms that you have questions for ascended master saint germain he'll um he'll assist you um with that so yeah oh i love it all so much <laughs> i think the question i kind of went off like no it was actually all that i wanted so that was great it was like this whole journey and that is what i asked for it, so that was great yeah, it just kind of um, started to come in where um, they wanted me to do the trance channeling where um, he uses my voice box and my hand movements to speak through me. So when that started, um, I would put it on YouTube for uh, people to watch his channeled messages. And now at this time, it's starting to accelerate because there's so many more people awakening and they're ready to hear his messages and uh, send a master St. Germain's working with many, many light workers um, at this time. It's not just me. It's like, there's uh, like thousands of light workers that he's working with. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're feeling drawn to him or you come across him on the internet or somebody mentions his name, it's probably cause he's, he's wanting to work with you. So call him in and um, he's got many messages and uh, gifts of the violet flame. It's, it's what he brings through um, for healing for people uh, is this frequency of the violet flame, which is a really high divine light frequency. Okay. And it helps with the uh, ascension symptoms. It helps you to awaken to remembering who you are as a conscious being. So, um, yeah, I guess my message for, for you is to connect with him directly. Like, okay. so even if you want to go watch um videos like the youtube videos of him channeling but you're not comfortable to book a private appointment you can call him in directly um but uh, he's wanting to to connect with everyone so and who is he as an ascended master like if someone were to look up his bio or his history what is it that he was um, and what how does he use his healing now with people you mentioned the violet flame Yes, he he was uh, he had many lifetimes on planet Earth as um, a lot of historical figures that you'd recognize like uh, Merlin or Francis Bacon. Cool. Um, yeah, there's there's uh, Joseph, uh, Jesus's father. There was um, I don't know. He has a lot of different uh, lifetimes that he's had that led up to what he came to teach now so he's an ascended master meaning he um has ascended to a higher frequency of divine love so like a higher dimension so they come to me from like a 12th dimension um vibration so when he was on planet earth his last lifetime he was named saint germain and he was named it after a town it's a, a town um i think it's in france um, so he had been named St. Germain, so he took on that name after he, um, as Ascended Master St. Germain. Now for two th the past 2000 years, we had Jesus as a spiritual leader, Buddha, like for the past 2000 years for, um, humanity during the uh, Piscean age. And now we're moving into the Aquarian age. So when St. Germain comes to me, he comes to me with, with Jesus as well. So it's, okay. it's yeah, they're, they kind of working together, but um, it's like 
St. Germain is a spiritual leader for the Aquarian age. And that's why he's telling me to tell everyone to call him in. Like he's, he's open to work with everyone, just like everyone's worked with or connected to Jesus in the past 2000 years. Okay. So, yeah, they come in together. And again, like you pick your spirit guides based on your belief system. So if you were um, raised in India as a Buddhist, then you'd be calling him Buddha, but it's the same energy. It's just what form would you like to connect with? But the divine love's going to come to you, um, whichever way you're comfortable with. Um, that's what you'll create in your reality. And when he says to me, I'm like, well, how do you, you know who your spirit guides are and he says well who do you want to create in your reality who do you want to play with you you chose your friends on uh planet earth you you can choose your friends in spirit world i love well. that yeah and it's our reality um and their their vibration is there and if you match that frequency of love that they are offering to bring in if you're open your heart's open to to connecting with them they will be there there he doesn't want you to question whether they're there or not he says if you're your heart centered and you're able to connect with um the divine love we will be connecting with you there's no question um it's it's your reality and their their energy frequency they can there's no time in uh in spirit form like we had we experienced time as linear where you know there's past present future but there there's no time so he can be with everyone at the same time in our reality but um yeah if you want to connect to anybody you're feeling drawn to it's probably because you're matching or it is because you're matching that frequency so if you know archangel michael keeps showing up then work with him he's that means he's there like if you're reading about him hearing about him it means you're matching his frequency and he's open to working with you. So um, they say that we get in our heads and see, sometimes we'll see the ascended masters as more important, but they wanna, they're saying we are you, you are us. So they want you to feel um, worthy of, of receiving, receiving their love and their messages and their healing and um, yeah. That's a beautiful way of putting it. I never thought about it like in that way, like, well, you are us, so you are worthy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's no difference. And every time that we integrate something within ourselves, like we're here experiencing the polarities on planet Earth of the dark and light, of everything on planet Earth has an opposite or a contrast. And as we experience that, we, we learn compassion. So when you experience the deepest darkness, then you'll know the polarity of that in light and that's when we learn compassion so if you if you lose a loved one and you're going through a deep grief as you integrate that frequency um back to love of that grief <laughs> transmute it you offer that compassion out to the whole universe so he's saying you we receive from you as well as you know we're teaching them or it's an ex equal exchange of energy so when we're when we're working with the guides it's always an equal exchange of energies um, so they, it's not like you can ask for too much. He says, you can't ask for too much. It's always an equal exchange. Um, he's telling me right now that there's some people that, um, are kind of intimidated or don't feel like maybe my question's silly, or maybe I, I shouldn't ask this. He, there's no silly question. Ask it. If, okay. if, it, yeah, they, they understand where they don't judge your questions. Um, you can't ask for too much and you can't ask a wrong question. They're never going to judge it. Um, and they never judge anything that we experience as humans. Like we're here to experience both the dark and light, um, as an experience. Mm -hmm. um, we perceive it as struggle, but they don't. They, yes. Yeah, so they're like, everything's great. It's supposed to be that way. Yeah. They're perceiving it as, um, you know, this this uh, beautiful experience from a soul's perspective when you go to the deepest darkness and then you have great soul expansion and so it's it's going to those you know difficult times in our lives um, where we um, grow the most on a spiritual level or expand our consciousness the most when you were a child what was that like receiving messages like did you see people or hear things or feel things because I know for me my grandmother 
is gifted in that way as well. So I grew up with like, that was a normal conversation where some families are like, you don't talk about that. Like I wouldn't go to school and talk to people that I'm like, I think I know things that I'm not supposed to know. <laughs> or I know things before they're happening. Like, you know, I wouldn't just like talk about that openly with people, but like in my family, it was kind of okay to talk about. So what was that like for you as a child? Like, was that received well? And also like, how did the spirit guide contact you in that way when you were younger? Um, so for me, it was very um, taboo. It was like, I was raised very Catholic and um, my parents did not believe in connecting with spirit. They thought that it would okay. be the devil getting in. So. I had to clear a lot with them, a lot of religious beliefs and stuff. So as a child, it was like, um, I would, I actually heard them different as a child. I heard them as, um, um, a louder voice of, um, uh, I would see like, like a vision, but also the, the voice was a lot clearer, more precise. Um, like there was no trying to connect. It was just very clear. And it was always right before something would happen that maybe emotionally would be difficult for me because I was so sensitive. So they would come to me and they'd say, you know, your grand, this is the last time you'll see your grandmother before she passes, but we want you to know that it's okay. And, um, you, you know, everything's fine. And then it was like, they would give me a knowing of not to share that okay right so it was like i knew that it was like something that i was going to keep to myself yeah but i didn't know why i just kind of it was like so they they would always show up um usually at my most difficult times in my life um or at the biggest events like where something really exciting was about to happen so i guess it was like when i was in a when you connect with spirit, like when you're in a really high vibration, they come in really easily. Mm -hmm. um, but with me, it was, it didn't matter. It just like they came, I, ca I guess when I needed them the most. Um, no. I kind of thought that it was, I think I thought it was just normal. Yeah. I, did, I don't, I don't think it, I never really, I don't know. I just thought it was kind of, it was normal for me. So I just, yeah. just normal for everyone. Um, the sensitivity uh, of how sensitive I was to, to everything, everyone's emotions, like everyone watching this is, isn't it like empathic or sensitive mm -hmm. to energy. So it, it, they all understand, everybody watching this understands what I'm talking about. It's like when you're a child and just being yes. over with everything and it's um you know shutting everything down with addictions i went into it, like a lot of addictions through my teenage years and right my most of my 20s um so now they're my addictions are are gone except for food I, i'm still a foodie but yeah <laughs> Yeah, so as I've, I've come back more in alignment with what I came to do, um, the addictions kind of just left because um, they explained to me like addictions, like that feeling, we're trying to get to the best feeling that we can get to. Yeah. And so um, the, our ego tricks us and says, well, if you, you know, if you have this, that'll make you feel better. So if you if you if you drink or if you eat or or whatever it is um whatever your go-to thing um so our our intention is to get to the best feeling place which is always our spirits always trying to get closer to the christ energy or, or god consciousness or universal energy source energy whatever you want to call it so um there's a lot of people he's telling me right now there's a lot of people watching this that have had addiction struggle and he doesn't want mm -hmm. you to judge anymore for it your intention was to try to get to a better feeling place and people with addictions have a lot of creative energy he's showing me their energy field as um, very large and so when you have all this energy and it's like what do I do with it well he's saying 
you know, to, to, the addictions calmed you down and grounded you. If I eat yes. this, I'll feel grounded. Um, he's, he's saying there's a lot of people just kind of um, stepping out. And it's, it's right now, it's to integrate yourself fully into your human body as a, a spiritual being, integrating into a, a human body and feeling safe. And um, when you didn't feel safe, you, you kind of stepped out and you've got all this energy and it's like, how can I, I feel safer? And so the addictions came in. When you create, and he's saying create with anything, um, sports, uh, art, music, writing, uh, flowers, uh, gardening, whatever, mother, being a mother, whatever creative energy that you have that you're drawn to, if you start creating 15 or 20 minutes a day, your addictions will go like, um, because then you're using that energy that you've always been trying to calm down you're using it to create from uh, God source energy. Um, so as you start to create, you connect with the consciousness within you. And so it's like your inner child or your spiritual body is, is the one that's creating because you're co-creator, your, your essence is consciousness. As you create, he's saying that the universe, the universal energy or um, that consciousness is going to join you and, and bring through the love into the creation. So if you look at any musician or artist, uh, you know, when they're in their, their zone, it's their consciousness is, is connecting with the consciousness of all and channeling that divine love into whatever they're doing. That's why it feels so good. That's why they continue to do it, even if it doesn't pay a lot, you know, it's not about the money, it's about um, creating. So he's saying a lot of people that are watching this have addiction struggles and he doesn't want you to view it that way <clears throat> I want you to to see the greatness within yourself and start what can i create with what can i use this energy to create and he said and the addictions will just kind of slowly go away he's saying to ask them for help they'll help with um um you know removing that that uh you know trying to feel grounded through the uh, addictions the cravings he's saying the yeah. cravings help with that beautiful that's such a more loving way to look at addiction is they're just trying to get to a better feeling place because a lot of people look at it as like there's something wrong with me or that person or they must not care or you like so much judgment where that's just such a good, gracious gentle loving way of look of really encompassing that term is you're just trying to get to a better feeling place, which is true. Yeah, yeah. The intention is always good. And, it, and he says it's, it's only you judging you. Mm -hmm. And when other people judge you for it. It's a reflection of how you're judging yourself for it. Like we beat ourselves up so much. And so it shows up in a reality to show us we're judging ourselves. Spirit never judges. He's like, we don't, we don't judge any of your addictions. Call us in and we'll, we'll, help, uh, we'll help you with it. And he's saying that there's a lot of people that don't feel worthy of receiving um, help from their spirit guides because of their addiction, because they're, they're thinking they're getting judged. And he said it's the opposite. He says, okay. call us, can I help you with it? And they don't have any, um, if you have addictions, it just means you're a great creator <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> really, basically you know, that's kind of what i was getting out of what you were saying as well like if you put that energy somewhere else imagine what that would look like yeah exactly julianne that's the it, you said it perfectly yeah mm -hmm. yeah and i'm thinking of like examples of just like people with similar stories and it's like well i had this addiction and then i turned it into this and everyone's like oh such a big transformation story and it's like well, they just really redirected their energy and used it more from a space of creativity. Because sometimes you need to get to like that low place so you just don't like give a shit anymore. And then you start being more yourself because you're like, well, I already did. Like, I already felt shitty. So I might as well just try something else. <laughs> and then it's really you're just becoming more yourself. That's awesome. <laughs> Good way of looking at it. Um, for like, for me, I have like, kind of, I guess my own definition of 
awakening and how that feels and what that looks like in my own life or if I were to explain it to someone else how would you define awakening or if there's people watching and listening to this that are like I think I have some symptoms or I have some things going on is that awakening or is that just something else like maybe they're questioning so how would there be kind of like a clear helpful way to define what awakening is Okay, so when you realize that everything outside of yourself is no longer making you happy. So that's how it usually starts. So it was like shit. <laughs> yeah. It's like um so as as uh as humans, we're in a third dimension reality, which is a reality that's run by the ego consciousness. So the ego consciousness is um its job is to keep us living in fear and so when you're awakening your spirit says I'm tired of living in fear and being worked up about things all the time and always seeking to find happiness outside of myself so the ego says buy this that'll make you happy and you buy it and then a week later you need something to buy something else because it's like an illusion of joy that you it can never be satisfied. It can never be fulfilled. Yes. So the ego always keeps us chasing. And now um, the the actual planet's vibrational frequency has raised to, to more love. And so we can connect with more love. And when we connect with more love, our spirit is love. And our spirit mm -hmm. says, okay, I'm tired of the fear-based ego game in the third dimension. I would like to run the show instead of having my ego keeping me live in fear. I'm tired of pleasing people. I'm tired of chasing things and never being happy. I'm tired. So it's like, it's when you awaken, it's that your spirit's getting louder than your ego. Okay. And the ego isn't something to be judged or because the ego comes from God consciousness as well. So it, it's universal energy and it's here to play the game of the polarity of your love so when um when you have the ego running the show if there's always struggle or your perception is that there's struggle there's suffering but when your heart or your spirit runs the show you see everything as perfect as love as it, so it's you're moving from a perception of um ego perception to a heart-centered perception that's the awakening. You're moving from a third dimension reality, perceiving everything in fear and struggle, mm -hmm. to a fifth dimension reality where your perception is that your everything is love and imperfection, and so that you don't get triggered by. Um, it's like, how can I see this in the eyes of love instead of the eyes of fear so when for example you you brought up the weather today so you know when our mothers call and say oh my god the roads are treacherous you know the, the snowstorm's coming you you need to to be in fear um saint germain says why would you be scared of a snowflake that melts on the tip of your finger you know it doesn't really make sense how what what if you saw it in as something beautiful and perfect would it be scary you know yeah. what what is the fear of the snowstorm when it's simply a snowflake that melts when you touch it like it, it's not anything more than that except for if your perception makes it bigger mm -hmm. so it's like as you begin to awaken your perception changes so that you're not stuck in this fear-based um, energy as you begin to awaken your ego says i don't want you to awaken i want you to keep you living in fear so it seems like your ego gets louder but it's not that it's getting louder it's because you're becoming more aware you're mm -hmm. becoming more aware of who you are as a conscious being and then once you realize that your essence is consciousness and that you're connected to uh, everything then you're empowered to change so once you realize that you are the creator of your reality then you have the power to change your reality but yeah. when your ego perception of fear it's thinking that everything's outside of you and that things are happening to you 
when you awaken, things happen for you. And yeah. so it's changing that perception. And, it, and then it's, it's saying, oh, I take full responsibility that I created this. And that's not blaming yourself, you know, but it's perceiving it in a different way. It's like, oh, I created this um, to happen so that I could expand in a different way or expand my consciousness mm -hmm. and not seeing it as struggle or something bad. Like, so if I have an illness, I don't perceive it as something bad. I perceive it as an emotion that's coming up to be loved. And as I love it, it goes away. I don't need to go to the doctor. I can just love it and it goes away, so. Awesome, it kind of like referred back to like, or it could also be applied to the addiction sense where it's like you realize something outside of you isn't pleasing you or isn't giving you that joy that you're looking for. So you have to use your creativity or go within and make that your new reality because that's actually going to fulfill you, not what's outside of you. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's perfect. Um, your classes, do they have to be in person or do you do online ones and how can people book sessions with you? Um, I have online classes and I keep them one-on-one -on -one so that you can get um, it directly for you for what you need to hear. And so I do an hour uh, how to channel class. It's $85 and we do it by Skype, FaceTime, um, uh, yeah, Skype or FaceTime. And I also do telephone readings. Um, by Skype, telephone, or FaceTime. And um, if I do telephone, it's in Canada, and then all the other ones you can do anywhere in the world. But there's two classes that I teach online. And if you go on my website, um, it's www.tarraarnoldart.com. And if you go Thank on. You. I was just going to ask. I, <laughs> maybe <laughs> you put it at the end of the video or something. Or, <laughs> underneath it um so if you go on my website you'll see uh courses and there's two ones that i teach online consciousness course and that's for the awakening or ascension and um then there's uh my youtube channels are on there and also for my readings i have a medical intuitive reading so if you have any medical stuff i can uh i work with the send master saint germain he shows me um the you know, any medical issues, and then they bring through healing frequencies to um, heal those, like to go to the root cause of the root emotion of the, the cause of the illness. So, um, and that can come through Skype or FaceTime. It doesn't, internet doesn't matter or in person. Yeah. And then I do like one, if you want to connect with spirit guide that crossed over, or if you want to just talk to the ascended masters, um, and talk to St. Germain and uh, trance channeling. I do a trance channeled reading as well. So those are all on my website. Uh, my readings are uh, $100 for a one hour, uh, hour reading. And um, I also do local workshops here in uh, Mahone Bay and Bridgewater um, and small group workshops. Um, they're really mm -hmm. fun. And so those are listed on my website as well. And what is your YouTube channel, the Tara Arnold's? Yeah, it's Tara Arnold, T-A-R-A, -A, um, mm -hmm. and it's Channeling St. Germain. So if you type in Channeling St. Germain or my name, you'll find it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Great. I'll add that in with the notes as well. Any final messages that you want to share, words of wisdom or information to anyone, anything else you want to share before we go? Um, I just want to say I appreciate uh, Julianne. I appreciate you uh, interviewing me, and you're a beautiful spirit and soul. And I, um, you. yeah, I feel quite honored to uh, be part of your podcast today. And I also want to say that um, everyone that's watching this is amazing, magnificent, and great. And Saint Germain saying it's time to step into your greatness. It's time to show who you are. It's time to um, you know, be who you came to be, and and that's uh, finding yourself um, as consciousness and showing the world your your gifts and your talents, and you're all amazing. It doesn't matter how much you've judged yourself; mm -hmm. um, we're all equal. And so he, he's just he's sending everyone out there a lot of love. Also, he's telling me that through this video today, he brought through frequencies 
um, for the third eye. So uh, after watching this, you might have more clarity, more awareness. Um, I'll, I'll just ask them if there's any other ones, just one second. Um, like the crown chakra, third eye, and the throat chakra. So <clears throat> you might, some of you that are watching might feel a little raspy in the throat. It's because they brought through healing energies for throat chakra, um, third eye, and crown. Um, the crown chakra is your connection to the divine and also the brain, spinal cord, the ego. And then the third eye is your... Um, your intuitive abilities, so you more clarity, more awareness, and so also like sinuses, eyes, um, anything to do with eyes, ears, sinuses. Um, if the third eye is blocked, that's where the kind of symptoms you'll get. So you might feel some mm -hmm. clearing, and uh, then the throat chakra, it's um, having a voice or speaking your truth. So it's mm -hmm. uh, yeah so those I've been are the clearing my throat a lot during this so i was like definitely throat chakra <laughs> yeah and he was and that's i was just explaining because uh we were saying that through the internet you can receive healing frequencies and so oh, yeah um, yeah so today that's where he was bringing them through so yeah yeah that's how it works so awesome thank you so much i really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me and i'll talk to you again soon i hope you enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy nova scotia thanks julian